we 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 we, we open to the elements. Mm -hmm. Be mindful that you need to ensure that your nourishment is yes. from the right source. It's from a strong source. It's from a source to make it grow. It's from a source to make it develop and maintain as you're supposed to. Do get, don't be astray. Don't get, don't get, don't let things distract you. Don't let, listen, this is the time when all kind of different things will come at you. Oh, yeah. All kind of different philosophy. Mm -hmm. And I reference back to the scripture, verses 22, right? When they talk about, but, but Christ, I, I perform. There are a lot of false prophets out there. There's a lot of false performers who draw in strength from other negative sources. I'm going to come and tell you. This is the way. Truly, truly, truly. My God is not so. You understand? And he's very simple. He's very calm. He's a he very, very, very calm. He's very still. So be mindful of that. At this stage in your Christian life, in your spiritual life, be careful where you're getting your nourishment from. Make sure it's from the word. Make sure it's from a mentor and a leader that is of some mind. Make sure you're, you're, you're within a support system. And here we're about to talk about family role. Spiritual family and carnal family plays an important part in our foundation. Just as a reference with Miracle and all of us who here and started with our family and we had a grandmother or a mother who insists when it's Sunday come and we get up and we go to church and we hear the word of God, it's the same way with the spiritual world. Oh my God. Our spiritual family builds us. Oh yes. And I have to say, and I will testify, oh. I have had the most growth within Gabriel Restoration Circle. Amen. So I give kudos in my family. You understand? My family supporting me. My and my family should take and tell us here with me. You understand? No matter where it be. And the last part I want to talk about in reference to the material to make up your foundation is your restorative support. Oh, yes. Hence, Gabriel Restoration. When I say restorative support, I want you to understand. When your foundation is tested and your building is shaken, Right. And it's broken down to pieces. Oh, Jesus. Your support system is what will help you build yeah. back on board. Your foundation oh, yeah. has to get door over time. Oh. And over years, you have wear and tear happening. You have all kind of things, corrosion, all kind of things happening with your foundation. So when you have that some restorative support, that hear what? You know, when, when you see, like, I, I just always say them people in Florida, they're brave. Because oh. every year, they build a house, hurricane come, take it away, and then boop, 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 they come back faster and they build up. That is what we kind of need with regards to our spiritual being. When we, when we oh. broken down, and when we torn apart, and when our foundation and life is tested on, and then we get to determine if it's really sinking sand, oh, yes. or if it's a rock, then we still need that restorative support to make sure and bring it all together. Oh, yes. Right? Um, Lord, it's continually highlighted throughout the Bible that the Lord is our rock and salvation. Today. Right? And once we understand that the Lord is our rock, only last night I was making a reference to somebody that your rock, it starts as a rock, but if you go into the world, you will realize it begins and it grows into a fortress. Oh, yes, so true. Once you stay within the world, oh. your restorative and your function will become, your foundation will not only stand as a rock, but will become a fortress for you. No, so true. when the enemy comes to test you and come to shake you and come to, to, to test who you are, because of your foundation, your foundation will enclose you. And save you from the enemy. Brothers and sisters, on Christ is solid rock I stand. Amen. All other ground is sinking sand. Now, before I leave today, I just want you to um, I want everybody to understand. Because I can tell you personally, you know, there's a hymn that goes, um, nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. I 
search all over, couldn't find nobody. I search high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. If I allow this song, we'll still continue here, they go take over. But let me just reference to that particular hymn. You know why I know the way he on that hymn right I know that nobody greater is when you try alternatives and they fail it time and time again, you understand that there's nobody greater than God. So you see all the tries of the, the sand foundation that we want to try. We want to be in the world. We want to understand things of the world. We want to put ourselves out there. We want to, we want to get involved with all sorts of stuff. When you try it, when you try every possible avenue to not want to accept God as a rock and your salvation, and you fall ten times forward. Hello? When you want to turn and understand that God is a solid rock. He is the rock. He is the foundation. He is the one to see you through. He is the one to make it get to watch through, run through this life, mm -hmm. and to be at ease. Hurricane could be coming. Winds could be coming. Thorns could be coming, a break could be happening. But once your foundation is of Him, on Christ the solid rock, you stand. And all other things, all other things will become sinking sand. So this morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to say a life without God, right, is, 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 is empty. A life without, without understanding Christ is empty. A life with, without getting up when the morning come and giving him praise and thanks, you know, could fall to you. And that's another thing with regards to, in terms of your foundation and building your foundation, your prayers, your worship. And if you want to reference that, you can go to Colossians chapter 3, where they tell you, focus on the things that is of him. Focus on, 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 on good things, goodly things, all the things of, of God. And that will continue to nourish you and build your foundation. So I, I don't want to go any further, right? Because this particular topic, it, it was one that expanded in my mind all, all out. But I don't want to go too far this morning. I just want to continue to encourage you all to not only say it, not only this, you know, Christ is my no, but understand what it takes to maintain your foundation. And you know what? For those of us who have all tried alternatives, we know. And in some form of fashion, I think everybody have a personal testimony. In some form of fashion, when you try an alternative and you notice that that thing could only sink your soul. It can only sink your soul. It can't give you the upliftment that God can give you. It can't give you the, the upliftment that praising and worshiping and thanking him can give you. It cannot give you the upliftment and the protection that he can give you in the face of a, of a, of a, of a adversary. God is our rock. My God. Right? And make sure, you know, if you have to understand at any point in time, you come into question. What foundation is standing on when you're at the lowest? Truly. When you're at that point in your life, at the lowest bearing point, oh, yes. as, as described in my definition, the oh, lowest yes. bearing point in, your, in, your, in your, your experience, when you feel you're at rock bottom, when you can throw yourself on the ground and beat up before the Lord, when you feel that help and that arm stretch out to you, and he stepped before you and you hold on to the hem of his garment and you get that restorative support and people to reach out and support you, then you, and then you can reference and know and understand the solid foundation that you own. And brothers and sisters, today, if you question it and you don't know, I am telling you, right? Test it. Think about it. Not test, but think about it. And ensure that your foundation is of God. Thank you, this is a prayer man. Praise him. Wonderful words. Wonderful, wonderful words. In the name of the Lord. First, stand up and talk. All right, go ahead. When you're standing on a solid rock, stand up and you do the call of your heart. Stay on your ground, prevail. Stay on your ground, prevail.
want to say pleasant good day to all of us gathered here today. You know, all all who on the um, Zoom today, all who listening, all who contributed, I want to say special thanks. But you know, Sister Candice and Sister Darren, you all were rather good. Brother Darren, you all were rather good. But you know what warm, really warmed my heart today was you know to hear little America. And then at the end of it, she could have turned around and say her mommy didn't help her. Amen. And you know, all, you know, give her, let, her, let us give her another round of applause. Woo!
to stand in all kinds of circumstances. Today, I want to say that we always try, especially with younger ones, especially with persons who have just come to God. And as Sister Candice rightly said, that is the critical time that people need to really, you know, be connected, be shown how they would be able to build a firm foundation, to grasp, to appreciate what they're learning, what they're hearing. And you know, all these things, as she rightly said, we are trying to do in a time like now. We are trying to see if we could have the little Bible classes so that people could get acquainted with the word, the spiritual food within their heart, because it has so many things out there that you could gravitate to it. But you see, when we try to feed you spiritually, and all of us benefit from this, right? That we would be able, when we full with the Holy Spirit, you know, we full and we connected to God. We may not want to take another road. We may not want to try something else. But I want to say our test in life really causes us to make alternatives. And depending on how strong and firm our foundation is, and I'm saying only a foundation that is, as I said before, on Christ could really stand. So I'm saying today, I am glad for all the little things that we did, you know, the wonderful words that we have heard, right? We know that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. We know that, you know, I, I remembered when Peter was asked about who Jesus is, Jesus himself asked that question, right? And you know, everybody else say, you are Elias, you are this, you are all a prophet, come back and that sort of thing. But Peter is one who could have tell him that you are the Christ, the, you know, the true and the living God, all right? And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal this unto you. But my heavenly father, which is in heaven, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. And I say this for to explain what it is. Right? Because many of us just feel that the church is built on Peter. But I want us to understand. It's the word, the revelation, the truth that Peter spoke. All right? Because, you know, Jesus realized the truth that came from Peter, that the Holy Spirit revealed unto Peter, that flesh and blood couldn't tell him. So because of this truth, because you understand that I come for a special purpose, because you understand I am the Messiah, and I really came so that I could have win man's soul back to God. I could have, you know, let man know that they could come to me for forgiveness. I could build my foundation, my church, because remember the church is your people. On this truth saying, Peter, I could build my church upon it. So I want to tell us today, let us understand this is in doing these things. Because long ago, eh, I and all was guilty of this. I and all used to say, you know, all the foundation is on Peter. But is he saying the truth saying and all of us building eh? yeah. the word to yeah. understand yeah. Yeah. that Jesus was the Messiah. True. I want to say today as we live, we live. all of us building. Yeah. I want to say when a child come into this world, a parent might say, let us look at it in this category. Eh? They're providing for the later days. So what they go and do? They open different bank accounts. They open unit trust account, all kind of thing. So that you see when time comes for them to study, they will have some monies. They will have some investment that they could go back on. All that is building, that income and growth fund, all that is a form of building. But what kind of building this is? That is building to the flesh. That is carnally building. But what Jesus said, from the time you see, we have been baptized and we accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
we are building spiritually. And as Sister Candice really said, what sort of material are we putting on this foundation of Christ that has been laid already? We can't put no other foundation. We, we, you know, we can't lay no other foundation because one is already laid. So when they tell us today, many people will come and try to give us another foundation. But let us understand today that the foundation that we have to build on is Christ. And what are we putting? What material? Because you know, we are all workers in the vineyard. All of us building. And what material? We have choice materials to use. You know the scripture tell us? It has gold, it has silver, it has precious stone, it has wood, it has straw, it has hair, it has all sorts of things. Alright? And our works tells us what material we use in. Are we connected to that source so that we will want to put precious metal or precious material on that foundation that is already laid? Or are we so connected to the world that we feel that we have to gravitate to things that are of the flesh? Today, as Sister Miracle really said, let us make a choice. Two roads to travel. What is our choice today? How are we building? What foundation are we building on? Are we building up material of the flesh? What happens then? And I heard her said something like that. When the time shall come, Sister America, when the time shall come, all of us and our works are being tested. All right? Our works, if it's not built on a firm foundation, which is the rock, which is Jesus, it is going to fall. Yes, we get trials and tribulation. But as Brother Darren rightly said, the coconut tree that was deeply rooted within the ground, it fell. And you know what happened? Because it was deeply rooted, when it should have been destroyed, it was able to grow up another part. And you know, these are things. Trials will come. Tests will come. But are we able to withstand it? And this is what we're looking at. This is what makes it different. So we have to understand life is this. We are going to get trials and tribulation. But are we able to stand? When it rock us, man. When we go through that trials and that tribulation. It has rock us so much. But you see, paraventia, that source that we have, being connected to Jesus. Sometimes we might hear a nice sweet word, word within our ear. Sometimes we might hear something within our heart to warm our heart and help us. You know, when we reach that rock bottom, to help us to look up onto the hills from which cometh our head. Today, I am grateful. I am thankful. You know, as we work in this vineyard, we know when our work is tested, I pray God that he continue to give us the courage and the strength. Because yes, we work. Our work in some instances may not be appreciated. But nevertheless, we must work. We must work for Jesus. Because this is our whole purpose here. So we're not looking for reward carnally. But we're looking for that reward spiritually. Because everything we do, God is taking a note of it. So if we work in this vineyard and it's not accepted, don't worry about that. Continue to work. Because we're building up a treasure for the world beyond. We're bringing, building up a treasure for in times to come. So I thank God that he's giving us these lessons. Every lesson have its own edification and its own thing that we could benefit from and you know it's just this morning I was there and I was saying we have done so many different topics and I trust that everybody or most of us would be able to understand what God is sending for us 
so that we could learn, as Sister Candice rightly said, it's happening in this COVID time, whereby we go in deeper and deeper into the scripture, deeper and deeper understanding of who we are and our whole purpose on this earth. So I pray God, appreciate. Just last night, my nephew was saying, the kind of things, a little one, eh? You know, because he would mingle with certain people and hear what they say. The kind of things that is coming. All right? And I want to tell us, we're not immune. We will not be exempt from it. True. So let us get deeper and deeper. Go down building deeper and deeper in Christ. Build with precious material. Continue to read the Bible. Continue to pray. Fast if you could. All this is working and do and most of all, remember the word of God and be obedient to his commandment. God say love him. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. As can this rightly say. Some of us, we don't study nobody else. We only study us. That is part of what God judging us on, you know. All this is building. Remember when Jesus said, right? People will come in my name saying that they do this and they do that and all kind of thing. But you see, sometimes they heart not foundational on Christ. He will ask, when I was in prison, did you visit me? When I was sick, did you attend to me? When I was hungry, did you feed me? And the question was asked, Lord God, when were you in prison? When were you sick? When were you naked? When were you hungry? But you see, we're looking for a special person to do these things unto. Why? Because, you know, we want to be bigged up after we do it. But at least we're not looking at them. We're neglecting the least. But this is, you see, all this is part of building, eh? All this is part of foundational building. And say building on a solid foundation. This is part of our works. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you'll be doing the commandments of God. Today I pray God that he will continue to instill his holy words within us. I pray God that we can continue to reach out so that others will be able to feed the hungry. They'll be able to feed so that they'll be able to get something that God will be able to build upon them. In these times, the important thing is growing and growing spiritually. Growing in Christ and building that relationship. So you see, what foundation are we building on? Is it a foundation that can stand the test of time? Or is it a foundation that will crumble? Is it a shack? You know the shack that they took is a wood and they, put a, and they put together. But we want to know that we are building our foundation in Christ on a solid rock. So when any situation comes, we will be able to stand. I thank God for all your listening ears. I pray God that he could continue to build upon us every day. And what I want us to, you know, I want to say, we have done so much work. And let's just go back on the YouTube from time to time. Let us see some of the work that we have done. Don't let it just go down the road. Because we're gathering and gathering and gathering. But we must have a foundation too. It must be here it today and by next week we forget it. In case we do, let us go back and start to listen and put some of those things into action. Only then we could say that our work is not in vain and we're building on a firm foundation. So giving God glory and praise for us, thanking God for us, because I know Wednesday again we back into our Bible classes and I pray God that we all, you know, the word could go out that everybody would be interested so we could all learn together.
because I myself is learning. And we can all learn together, all to the honor and glory of God. Praise so God. praises, praises, praises. praises.